Since this is the second time I'm rebuilding the engine after the disaster uh, with the crack block, um, I didn't show a lot on the distributor the first time, but I did go through the entire, entire system. Um, this car uses the standard uh, large cap uh, high energy ignition system, and I wanted it all fresh, so I did a complete overhaul of the distributor. The first thing I did was check to make sure the shaft was tight. I used a dial indicator and made sure that the, the bushings and the distributor housing weren't loose. Um, this one happened to be very good. And in order to do everything, uh, you have to take out the shaft. So the um, so there's a roll pin um, right here, Spr a spring roll pin that you have to put, you have to hold this assembly in a vise and drive that roll pin out and mark the shaft and the gear in some way so that uh, it goes back in the same orientation. And there's a thrust washer underneath, there's some things to watch for. But if you drive that out and you take the gear off, then you've got the ability to pull it, take this shaft all the way out. And on the shaft, there's a uh, if I can get it in the right orientation. There's a toothed um, pole piece on there. It goes across the points of the magnetic pickup. So I went through this whole distributor. First of all, you pull that shaft out, and then you can work on taking the uh, magnetic pickup out, uh, replace the capacitor, replace the uh, module. I replaced the module and the capacitor. But if you get those first out of the way and you remove the shaft, and just so you see what they look like, so that's the module, the ignition module. Uh, this car uses one that's uh, they call a seven, uh, seven pin. Five over here and two on the bottom. Um, this is what the capacitor looks like radio capacitor and I was just concerned that out of age that the capacitor may not be good any longer. Um, this connector that's on the capacitor goes up to the uh, distributor cap and the other end connects to the uh, connects to the module like so when it's installed. The pickup itself is a little bit tricky. Um, the pickup Try to get you a picture of it. So this is what the pickup looks like. Uh, you can see inside that there are, for this engine, there are eight points and those line up with the uh, with the points on the shaft uh, with the pole piece. And when the pole piece rotates past those points, uh, that's when you get a magnetic impulse that triggers a spark. Now this guy is, I'll try and do it this way, in order to take this out of the distributor you need to disassemble it. You can see it in the shop manual but they'll run these screws out here. So once you do those three screws you lift that top piece off. That's called, I think they call the book, calls that a magnetic shield. And then here's that piece with the magnetic um, points on it. Again, show you that. So that comes apart off the top. And then underneath, there's another ring. And then at the bottom of that, you still have the coil that comes out. And that's the coil of wire, the pickup coil that you want to make sure. So you can look, there's the base. Uh, in the base of the distributor there's a there's a roll pin that this tab goes over. So you you install that over the roll pin. When you get a new one, you'll get this whole you get this whole set of parts. And you drop the coil in. 
you drop the, I guess you call it the magnet in, and it's got a tab in it, or a, I'll call it a recess, that lines up with the coil. So you get it together like that. And then, and this one, with all the, the poles, goes in on top of that. And then the aluminum, the aluminum shield goes in on top of that. So if you had the distributor part, you would assemble this whole thing down inside there. Uh, there is a washer, as I recall. I think they called it a sea washer, but there's a washer that goes inside that it sits down in this assembly. So the one thing that I found was it was hard to get this part out of the distributor because you can see right there, there's a residue on the bottom. This was apparently installed with some kind of an adhesive sealer. This part was kind of stuck and didn't want to come out until I broke that loose. In any case, I replaced that whole assembly. When you put the shaft back through here, you assemble that distributor, the, uh, you really have to watch out because these pointed pieces uh, that line up with the pole pieces on the shaft, you have to spin the shaft and make sure that none of these touch. There's enough clearance when you run the bolts down. Uh, there's enough clearance to shift this back and forth or up and down a little bit. And you need to be able to spin the, the rotor shaft. You need to be able to spin this without it touching. And mine did. It, it wouldn't turn freely. Now when you do turn it, you'll feel, uh, I'll call it the magnetic cogging force in there. It kind of pop, pop. Every time it goes over one of those magnetic po poles, it, it wants to stop. And so there's, you, can, you can feel it line up. And it, again, when, you're, uh, when the engine's operating, that's the energy that will trigger the pickup coil and tell, it, tell the ECM uh, you know, to fire the spark plugs, fire the coil. Once again, if you kind of see the, you can see right down in here how that lines up as those points go around. So anyway, I replaced all those parts so everything was brand new. Then you have to drive the, put the gear back on and drive that roll pin back in. So that's, that's really the prep. Then, I'll note also, I did replace the coil on the first go-around. Uh, this is the old one, the old cap and the old coil. It's not hard to replace, they're just, you got four screws around the outside, you have connections that drop down into the cap. Uh, the reason this one's apart, you'll notice the bolts are missing out, out of here. The, uh, the new coil didn't come with screws. And the new cap didn't come with screws. So I took the cover off and took the screws out of the old one, moved them to the new one.